What's up, guys? Welcome to Box to Box Football, and uh, we're here to talk about um, reigning champions Manchester City. And uh, this is an interesting question right now: Is Man City turning the Premier League into league on? Because I want you to realize this right now: since 2012, Man City Jack has won what five Premier League titles. They're, they're on. They're going to be on to the sixth one now. And yet, that's my, yes, Manchester United dominated it in the past to a point where they're winning three in a row. They're winning three out of. They're winning like five out of six. Some crazy like that, but. The way Man City's doing it, Jack, is a little bit different right now. They're breaking serious records, like most goals scored in the calendar year, 106 most wins in the calendar year. They've already had the most wins, uh, the most wins in the Premier League season, most winning goals by scored big, in the Premier League winning, season. Winning Biggest by big Premier margins, margins too, mate. That's the thing. They win leagues by like qu quite big margins, you know? where it's actually like, wow, this wasn't even close. Man United, you and I have talked about this before. The treble winning year, to a certain extent, was a little bit of a blag. You know, there were a lot of there were a lot of moments across those three trophies where you actually kind of went, "This wasn't super convincing." They've won that, it, but this wasn't super convincing. Like that Premier League, like that treble year, could have been like a double for Arsenal and no trophies. <laughs> right, for Manchester United. right. If you're basing it on like margins, literally margins. But where's this? Um, where's this Man City team? It's like they won the league. Oh, and they smoked everybody. Like it was that, convincing. I think last season they won it by thirteen. I'm not sure exactly, but but they won it by with like four or five games. To, uh, to spare right. they've got 100 points and jack just this season like we they had a bit of a blip at the start of the year but once that train goes it's just it's just so hard to stop we mentioned that um i'm coming to the start of the season and they added again jack um what they had a seven nil win against um leeds yeah. they had uh they just beat um newcastle i think four one or, uh, or, or like something beat? like that and, Leicester and, 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 six and, three, and, right? like yesterday, and yesterday they beat Leicester six three. So Man City's dominance is just—it's getting to a point right now where it's hard to stop. I remember when Pep Guardiola came to the Premier League, people asked, "Could he dominate the Premier League like he dominated the Bundesliga and La Liga?" But Jack, he's done that and more. The Premier League, to me, to Man City, they've turned it into a league on because even PSG, as great as they are, they don't dominate league on the way Man City. Have taken apart the Premier League in like like in like in these last few seasons. But Jack, you go go ahead and tell me your argument on. No, no, no. Look, I I agree with you. I oh, think it's okay, I think okay. it's, yeah no like and and I think that you know again we can talk about Bernardo Silva, El Gundogan, we can talk about Ruben Diaz's impact. Um, you know, João Cancelo, De Bruyne, even though he's not been around, what a player he is on his day and all this kind of stuff. The, the the reason why this success is happening is Pep Guardiola. Um, you know, going again is really, really hard. Really hard. A lot of the time, people reach the pinnacle. They reach the top. They reach the World Cup. They reach the Champions League. They re reach a domestic title, the hardest domestic title to win, in my opinion, the you know English Premier League, right? And then they go, ooh, good. I've, <laughs> I've had my career. I'm on six figures a week. Everything's good. I'm playing football with, you know, people I'm close to now. My family's good. Everything's fine. To get these players to go again, you mentioned it previously, you know, with 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 Ferguson and the three-peat, to re-energize a team to go again, not just once, but again and again and again, as Pep is now proving that he's doing now, is an incredible achievement. I guess my question where I want to lead this conversation, James, there's all this talk about the number nine position, the number nine position, the number nine position. Correct me if I'm wrong, James. What's the number one job of a number nine? Score goals. Right. Now, this is not some target man, Pep Guardiola. Yeah, we're going to knock it long. He's going to hold up the ball and then we're going to come support him. Sam Allardyce, Bolton Wanderers type deal, right? This is Pep Guardiola. This is sophisticated football. And James, I'm looking at the league right now and I'm seeing two teams that are tied for most goals scored. Now, Liverpool have a game in hand, in all fairness to them, but I see Man City with 50 goals at the moment. That does not, for me, over 19 games, that does not, for me, signify a team that's crying desperately out for a striker. Now, do you take a risk on somebody like Harry Kane? Do you bring in somebody like Erling Haaland? Does, is Erling Haaland the type of guy who's going to suit what Man City are trying to do? Does Kylian Mbappe unsettle the dressing room already? I'm, I'm starting to wonder now, mate, if tens of millions of pounds on a striker position isn't trying to solve a problem that actually doesn't exist. They scored six goals yesterday. Jack, in my opinion with this Man City team, Man City don't need a striker to win the Premier League. Man City don't win a striker to win the next two, three Premier Leagues. Why? Because Guardiola has figured out the Premier League. 
to a point right. where teams will come against Man City and they they will be frightened. They will like they'll be frightened to come out and step out in certain positions because because they know Man City are going to open them up. They're going to sit back and and then they're going to do what Man City like them to do is is um is like sit back. Can we withstand pressure? And you know what Man City's going to do? They're going to move the ball. They're going to be patient. They're going to be patient. Wait for the openings to happen and then bang 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 they're in. And then after a while, team realizes, oh damn, we have to come out. They come out, space is already available. And right. you, you look in Man City, two, three up. Yep. In the Premier League, Man City are fine. Why? Because they are the best team in there. <laughs> and it's hard to stop a Pep Guardiola team when, when like he has the best team. The problem is for Man City <clears throat> is, is that can they do that in the Champions League? And can they do that in the Champions League long term? Because I've no doubts that Jack. If, my, if Pep Guardiola stays where he is right now and keeps the same mentality and obviously refreshes the team again, well, they could win the Premier League for the next three, four years in a row, Jack. That's how... Sure. The, only, yeah. the only thing that could stop them is maybe Jurgen Klopp in, in like... And a couple in, signings, right? You know, and, 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 like, and a couple of big signings. But yes. I'll tell you this right now, and this might be a, this might scare a few Manchester United fans here, but the Premier League record is 13 for most um, Premier League titles. Man right. City right now are sitting on five, Yeah. Let's just say they go on to win the um the next one. Are you trying to tell me if Pep Guardiola stays another five more years that they won't win another three more? And then and then my and my Man United will be looking over their shoulder and be like, wait, we got the most, but Man City are really catching up with us when it comes to Premier League titles. Because this notion that Man City is isn't even a big club, I don't get it. How can you not be a big club and win five Premier League titles? It makes no sense. To well, me. it's it's. <laughs> It's legacy and history, though, as well. That's what comes with big. Now, now for me, con contributors to big are assets as well. I, I think a big, I think a, a notable, big, impressive stadium is part of that being a big side. And I think the Etihad definitely serves that purpose. I think the academy setup. We know what the investment that's gone in there as well, and we we see the legacy, um, you know, the big moments and the things. So, so yeah, they've definitely elevated to that kind of level now. Um, I guess. For me, James, as well, another thing, another thing I think about, that Man United 13 number is not going up anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, Jack, that's what I, I mean, mean this, James, that's what I'm it saying. might, it might, don't get me wrong, there's Cristiano Ronaldo and there's talent and there's, you know, it's Old Trafford and there's money available and, you know, we, we know the relationship between money and football, blah, blah, blah. It will breed success at some point. But I'm telling you, one team looks a hell of a lot more likely to increase their number than the other. And that's that's a really, really big deal. What I The other thing I would just want to ask you about, any draws or any losses in Europe or in the Premier League, how many of those draws or losses do you look at if you're Man City and you go, the reason why they lost is because they didn't have a difference maker in the number nine position who was able to be that difference? Because I don't look at too many games across the whole of the season where I go, man, that game there, the only reason why they didn't then go on to win or go on to qualify for the next round of this competition or whatever is because they didn't have that number nine. I think there are way more factors at play as to why they didn't uh, uh, get to that next level than spending 70, 80 million on, on an Erling Haaland, attempting Kylian Mbappe with a huge contract, right? I, I don't know if that is going to make the difference in a lot of these games. Maybe I'm wrong, but but it doesn't point that way to me. I think they need depth at that position, but I, I don't know if you're, like I say, I, it feels to me like they're potentially solving a problem that actually doesn't even exist. Well, I think it doesn't exist in certain situations because to me, the Chelsea game at the final, it was clear as day that they needed something there. And these are big moments, Jack, um, that we're talking Most about. Most important game of the year. Listen, I do believe, I like, I do believe overall that Man City can cope without strike in the Premier League. But for them to win the Champions League, I don't, they don't just need a striker, Jack. They want, they need a world-class striker, a Harry Kane, an Erling right. Haller, and uh, Mbappe, who, 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 if he can play there. But if Man City can get that, then it's like, okay, you put your hands down there they could do they can win as many um as like as as they want but right now pep Guardiola yep. is, is a, a very smart man he knows yes. what the media is going to be like so once man city draw a game or like lose a game against tottenham you knew what happened they lost one goal are you telling me man city don't create chances right. they only lost by one goal right. or <laughs> against psg where they had tons of chances they didn't score what's going to happen it's always going to be that case but guardiola knows that he will only go for a striker 
that will fit his system and it will change Man City. So not no average Joe is gonna come in and like and I like come into this Man City thing because I guarantee you this right now he'll be sitting on the bench, Jack. Look at like Jack, James. Look, look at Gabriel Jesus. But who are these names? That's what I'm because 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 James, if if I'm Pep Guardiola. I am not going to my owners and going, I want you to spend 90 million to 100 million euros on Harry Kane right now. I'm not I'm not trying to make that transfer now. I was trying to make it maybe at the end of last season when when this all came up. I thought, yeah, maybe. But from what I've seen recently, I'm not spending that kind of money on Harry Kane. I think that is a huge, huge risk. To me, there's very, very few names that are actually going to be available in circulation that can maybe give Pep Pep what he wants. And even then, I don't look at the, these kinds of players and go, super fit, super fit. Like Dusan Blahovic, we're, we're talking about. You know, that's my favorite player in the world right now. I think the guy's a menace. Erling Haaland, right? Got another guy who's just a menace, can give you absolutely everything. Are these players who are Man City striker type players? Do you know what I mean? Because to me... The, the player I would look at is somebody like a Lautaro Martinez, right? This is very much a kind of Sergio Aguero breed type of striker. That's the kind of guy I would look at. But again, is that the right... Do you know what I mean? I, I don't I, have that two plus two is four kind of green, you know, light in my head. Jack, let's just say Man City have the money to get whatever they want. But guys, we've we've I, I've asked more than one question today. How <laughs> Man City turned the Premier League into league on? Can Man City beat Manchester United's Premier League all-time tally of 13? Can they catch them? You know, um, are they going to win the league? All that sort of stuff there. Man City fans, comment down below. Do you, um, also, do you, does Man City need a striker? And who, know, guys. who should it be? Comment down below, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. This is Box to Box Football, and we will see you later.